Alrighty. So it looks like the comments are loading, but hey, hey, Girl Scouts. Uh, my name is Rachel, or uh, I guess my camp name is Rocky. Um, you can call me either of them. So we are hanging out today and we're going to be talking about comic books, kind of in relation to the comic artist badge, but we're going to kind of do some cool freeform stuff. Um, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the history of superheroes and some of the cool things that superheroes have come to represent. So um, if you guys are joining me live, if you can just comment in the chat below um, uh, your favorite superhero, uh, that would be awesome. I have a couple of favorite superheroes. Um, my favorites are definitely um, Robin is one of my favorite superheroes. I know he's a sidekick, but I consider him a superhero. Um, I'm a really big Captain America fan, and I have been a huge Spider-Man fan. And as a kid, I wanted to be Spider-Man very bad. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, comic books. I know this week is the superhero week at camp. So I hope all you campers are ready to um, figure out how we can make some cool comics, talk a little bit about comics um, and what your interests are. So as we're waiting for people to hop on, if you could just go ahead and comment in the chat who your favorite superhero is, um, or if you had a superpower that you would love to have, what that superpower would be. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So um, if I had a superpower, it would probably be um, not getting tired which seems like a really lame superpower, but I get tired so easily and I miss out on a lot of fun stuff. So I would want to be maybe a little bit stronger too, I think would be my superpower. So go ahead and comment your superpower um, that you would want and we'll kind of get started. So um, like I said, we're kind of covering comic book artists. Um, we covered it a little while ago too. Uh, I did a little workshop on it. Um, so we're just going to kind of do some of the fun art part of uh, what camp can be. So um, since the theme this week is superheroes, we're going to kind of focus on um, superhero comics. But if you are a big fan of things like manga, uh, manhwa, things like that, um, of course, you can always take inspiration from those. If you guys know uh, Boku no Hero Academia or My Hero uh, Academy, that is a Japanese manga and anime series that's actually based on superheroes. So if you're interested in those things, of course, we always encourage those interests too. So what we're going to kind of do today is I'm going to teach you guys um, about the four panel comics. Um, you know, just a couple of um, different ways you can structure this very easily. This is a super simple layout you can do. Um, you know, but you can also do uh, some really cool changes with it too. So which Robin is your favorite? I, the first three are my favorites. So um, there's Dick Grayson, there's Jason Todd, and there is Tim Drake. And those are my favorite of the Robins. Um, Jason Todd is probably my favorite though. Um, so I, I'm a big comic book fan. So we'll kind of talk about those things. But one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about today too is the history of superheroes. Um, which seems like it could be kind of boring, but it's totally not. And it's one of the things I want you guys to think about when we think about superheroes and what superheroes can stand for and what kind of superpowers we could want. So one of my favorite superheroes is Captain America. Um, I, my favorite Marvel movie is Captain America, the Winter Soldier. So I have like a little fancy, um, that's the, the case for this hardcover book. But my, my favorite superhero is Captain America, um, one of them. And um, so one of the cool things about Captain America's history that m not everyone might know is that um, Captain America started during uh, World War II, actually. So the first Captain America comic came out in, I want to say 45, actually. Um, so 1945, um, and it features Captain America um, fighting um, Nazis on the cover of it, which is something that's actually been really common with Captain America. And so kind of the interesting thing about that in, in the context of Captain America's history is that the creators of Captain America um, were Jewish. So there was definitely a feeling of um, support for the country, of that patriotism, but also, um, you know, those are things that we want to consider when we're writing comics. So who is writing this comic and why might they choose to have a uh, a character, a heroic character, do something like that, and, and how comics can be a bit of a catharsis too. So, you know, Captain America is um, strong and, and, and powerful, but he always uh, fights for those who, who need someone to fight for them. So that's kind of his thing. He fights for the disenfranchised. So when you think about superheroes, kind of think about what superheroes um, focus are. So someone like Captain America is really focused on fighting for um, people who might not have someone to support them, um, you know, Aquaman's a very easy one. Aquaman, of course, is going to be focused on fighting for uh, keeping our oceans clean. 
So when you think about comic books and thinking about writing superhero comic books, um, you know, we kind of think of why might it, what kind of superpowers do our superheroes have? What, what do they do? What kind of cool things can they do? But what I encourage you guys to think about too is what superheroes represent. Um, superheroes represent championing a cause. So is there a issue in your community as a superhero that you would like to, um, you know, what cause do you want to champion? And think about those issues, the issues that are happening in your current community. Um, maybe you're thinking about how um, there might be students at your school who don't have access te to technology. So what kind of superpower would you have that could help them so that they would be able to um, you know, participate in school or participate in some really cool activities. So, you know, kind of the history of comic books, they usually have that little element of, um, you know, fighting for a good cause, fighting for something. So think about what the motivations of your superhero characters are um, when you are thinking of your comics. So we'll come up with our characters, come up with your characters on your own, kind of think of those issues and, you know, how they relate and, and how you can rate your comic book characters to them. But what we want to focus on today, too, is how can we make a four panel comic? And of course, I'll show you a couple of examples of comic books. Uh, four panels is not to be, um, I wouldn't say not the standard. I think it's a, it's a really good starting point, and there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with four panel comics. So we'll kind of talk about uh, panel spacing and what I'm going to describe as weight. So um, action weight in a comic uh, composition. So if I have a really big panel, that's probably going to draw your eye to it. You're going to draw your eye right to that big panel and look directly at it. So I have an example here. And if you watched, um, let's see, we did a Facebook Live kind of talking about these things. So I want to show a couple of the pages. Um, so if you have a really big panel that is taking up the majority of your comic page, this is a really good example. And this is a good use again of color and this is going to show something too we'll talk about so this is from robin year one it is a really good comic i really like it um and it kind of tells the story of the original robin uh dick grayson so we're we're talking about how panels can have weight do you guys kind of notice that when i open this where does your eye directly go to so what's the first thing you're gonna you're gonna see and to me i immediately my eye is drawn to this page right here um, looking at these panels over here, they're really tight, they're really dense, um, there's not a lot of color in them, so it's not as engaging and it doesn't draw our eye. And that's intentional, that's intentional to the mood of this scene. So um, this is Dick Grayson, the first Robin. If you guys don't know the history of Batman, uh, he is the ward and um, eventually adopted son of Bruce Wayne, uh, who is Batman at night in uh, billionaire philanthropist uh, Bruce Wayne during the day. So. As someone who is a philanthropist, he has to go to many galas, kind of boring events, which isn't really where Robin or Dick Grayson wants to be. So you can see in these panels right here, he's very upset. The panels are really tight. They're almost claustrophobic feeling. Um, we can feel how the character feels in that situation. It, it feels uncomfortable. We, we don't like how tight everything in it is here. You know, even the text is a little bit tight. Um, you have to really read. There's a lot of text on the page. Your eyes drawn all across the page, you know, there isn't that flow that you would anticipate for something that we would think of as easy to read composition, um, but it's intentional. It's intentional because it's showing in the emotion of the character. So when you are making comic book panels like this, four panels like this can show um, the actions that you wanna do, but being creative with your panels is really fun. So when you get those basics down, you can start changing the size of panels to, to create different emotions and feelings. So. That one again, and then when he's finally out over the city as Robin, even the text has changed colors. It's bright red. It brings your eye to it. It's the same color as his uniform. You know, there's not as many panels. There's just a couple of actions. Him flying through the air, landing right here. He's kind of hunched over a little bit like how Batman does, almost like a gargoyle on a building. Um, and then again, jumping and leaping through the air. So we're getting to see that action. Um, so when you compose a, a, a comic book page, those are some of the things that you want to think about. Um, one of the things to think about too when making comic book pages, and this is something that I wish when I was a young artist, people would have talked to me a little bit more about. Um, but, uh, you know, thinking about um, the fact that the, the first drawing you do does not have to be the only drawing you do of your comic book page. So. Uh, a lot of times when comic books are made, it's actually a team of artists who are working on that. 
Um, and that applies to both in American comics and in Japanese comics. So if you look into like manga studios or current comic book studios, um, outside of any publishers, a lot of comic books are actually a team of people. And so there are a ton of names at the top of this Robin comic. You have Dixon, who is a writer. Um, I believe B is also a writer. Uh, Polito is an artist. Um, and there are a couple of jobs within that comic book industry. So you might have someone who's the penciler who does all of the first pencil work, like laying down everything, um, coming up with the drawings, different things like that. Um, so you have your first person who's going to be your penciler. Uh, and then actually they'll take another sheet of paper over those pencils um, and they trace it. And that's going to be the inker who does that. And what the inker does is they, they have to work with the artist in a way because um, if you've ever tried to ink a drawing before, you might notice that there's it doesn't have the same feeling as your sketch. So if you've ever had a sketch and then afterwards you're like, oh my God, I ruined that. I can't believe I did that. I loved how that sketch looked and it looks totally different now. Um, that's why the inker will do a, a trace page of it. So they're not drawing directly on that artist's original work. Um, it's also nice to trace things too. I know that seems kind of crazy, but um, it's a great way to practice. It's something that I recommend. So if you draw out your comic book panels, draw them in pencil first, and then take another sheet of paper, go up to the window, tape down your initial drawing on the window, tape down the next piece of paper over it, and do something called a clean sketch. So you'll uh, take your pencil, you'll go over your drawing so you have clean lines and then you will then ink that drawing so you don't ruin that first one you can always keep that first one um you know just because it's the one you're working on doesn't mean that you can't trace over and practice and do different techniques too so if you're not sure what colors you want to make your drawing um do that technique as well kind of trace over it um, and lay down different colors so it's it's fun and it's a way for you to experiment so maybe this artist did this whole scene in black and white, but they wanted to try different color schemes for it. When you do the trace method, you're able to do different color schemes and try different things. Um, if you use a, a tablet to draw with, so if you use an iPad, um, I always recommend something like Procreate for uh, drawing, especially for, for beginners. Um, you know, and you can just do different layers and things like that and kind of change that. And maybe we'll do a demo on that one day too and show you guys how to do uh, digital artwork, which is becoming a really big thing. Um, when I was a kid, my dad would have to take my drawings to his work to scan them for me and then upload them so I can make digital art, but we don't, ha we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> um, so we're going to kind of talk about uh, that panel structure that I mentioned earlier. So we looked at that page from Robin Year One, which was like a really interesting comic book page. You know, um, Dick Grayson is a superhero that doesn't really have a focus on the kind of superheroing he does. He just wants to kind of keep people safe, um, unlike someone like Aquaman who's going to be really focused on the oceans. Um, he's just kind of just generally there to keep people safe. Um, so we're going to talk about some um, terminology when it comes to comic art and, and what different things mean. So you might have heard me say things like panels in the past. Uh, each individual image you guys are going to have when you make a comic is going to be, let's do it this way, is going to have panels. So I have four panels right here. And the way that we read Western comics is going to be, this is my first panel. This is my second panel. This is my third panel. And this is my fourth panel. So I have four panels right here. If you're reading Japanese comics, it's actually gonna go this way. So if you've ever read manga before, um, your first panel starts here. It goes one, two, three, and then four. So this is a pretty simple comic structure to understand. Um, there are some comics that get so complex in the action that happens in them. Um, I don't think I have one with me, but there's a there's a manga called Trigon that's a little bit hard to understand because, um, you know, sometimes the artist won't use panels um, and will just have, let's see if I can find it in Robin Year One, won't use panels and instead will just use, there we go, there's a great example of this. So we have panels in this image right here on the left. We have panels, we kind of have some creepy girls who look like Alice in Wonderland, which is one of the themes in the comic. Um, we have Robin right there, and this is a drawing with panels on top of it. So think of creative ways you can do that too. That scene with him is the more important uh, narrative scene that's happening. So it's, this is the bigger picture of the scene, and then it breaks out into smaller panels for us to see the details. So think of structuring a page that way. 
So we have our page and we have our panels of our comic on the page. Now, what you'll do in professional comic books, and this is the same for, let me grab a manga real quick that I have. This is the same for manga too. So you'll kind of notice that in between panels of comics, uh, this is the manga Delicious and Dungeon, which is a really fun manga. It's about, um, if you're interested in things like D&D &D or video games, they, uh, they go through dungeons and they actually cook the monsters that they defeat to make, like this is right here, it's a, a roast basilisk. So it's, it's a fun manga. Um, regardless, though, uh, you'll, you'll notice a similar thing that's happening in this manga that was happening in the uh, Robin comic we were talking about, which are these white spaces in between the panels on the page. So the page is the full image we have right here. The panels are the drawings. And then these are actually called gutters, which seems kind of it's a weird term, but these are the panel gutters. Um, and this creates space and allows you to um, just have cleaner pages. So when I did this one right here, you can of course always make comics like this. You don't have to have gutters in your panels. Um, and there are actually some indie comic artists and uh, smaller comic artists that choose not to use that and use a little bit more freeform, um, which is okay too. But if we're kind of doing those Western comics, um, even Japanese comics will do it too. If we want those really nice clean pages, um, I recommend testing out using uh, gutters in your pages. So we have one like this where it's those one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go to this page right here actually. And when we do those gutters, it'll look kind of like this. So you don't want it to be centered. I would say give yourself some space in between the lines and then create your panels. So I'm going to actually make panels within these. And do this with pencil too, so you don't have to deal with the, the lines that I have now in there, but you can see how it's creating those gutters. And gutters don't always have to be, um, they don't always have to be white in color. So depending on the mood and the theme of your comic that you're making, um, maybe it's kind of a darker theme. So you have those dark gutters in between, or maybe you have different colors for your gutters. Uh, maybe it's a black and white comic and your gutters are bright colors in between. Really get creative. The, the cool thing about all art is, um, you know, learning the rules so you can break them is one of the things that my art teachers always said. So you, you gotta learn the methodology so that you can um, expand on it and, and really deconstruct how comics are made. So we got our comic page like that. I'm gonna do black gutters just because we're already kind of here. And then the nice thing about this is it's going to kind of break down and now we can see a little bit clearer those different panels. So we've got our superhero character in our head, the idea of what we want our story about. Um, what are the superheroes protecting against? What is your superhero fighting for? Um, maybe your superhero doesn't fight and they're really just focused on educating people on how to keep parks clean. Um, you know, issues in our community might be, um, you know, making sure that there are still wildflowers, that not all wildflowers are completely mowed down so that animals and uh, insects have something that they can pollinate and that's better for the full ecosystem. So maybe your character um, superpowers, they can make plants grow and, and things like that. So think about who that character is. And then we kind of have that comic structure. So that's the simple four panels. That's one, two, three, four, which you can do a comic in that way. But what I want to show you guys too, is that you can create um, different weight is what the term I'm going to use to describe it. Um, but it'll, it'll kind of bring that eye in. So just like that Robin page we were talking about where the big picture of Robin and the previous page was all of these little tight panels that were really close together um, makes us immediately when we turn that page, we our eye goes to that really bright image. So thinking about that color and thinking about that structure. So we're going to do variations of four panels. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do four panel comics within my four panel comics. Um, so this is another great way too, if you want to do page layouts, I always recommend sketch, 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 sketch. If you have a sketchbook, your sketchbook should predominantly be squiggles and doodles and you testing things. Not every page to your sketchbook should be a completed drawing. It can be. And um, if you are interested in things like art school or a 
um, path in artwork, they really want to see some completed drawings in those pages as well. Um, but sketchbooks are where you get your ideas out and sketchbooks are where you have a conversation with yourself on what you want to do. So what I recommend is doing something called thumbnailing, and this is what they will do in comic industry as well. Um, I do it in my own personal art where I do a couple of quick sketches of the drawing that I want to make. Um, and then I, I blow them up bigger. So I would say do a small page of thumbnails of kind of the structure of what you want the comic to look like. Um, and then blow it up a little bit more like this so you can kind of determine what that action is going to look like. So I'm going to take this uh, brush pen again and we're going to kind of look at a couple of different structures. I was doodling a couple out myself and thinking of different ways I can show this and explain it. So let's do, let's say that this is my comic page right here that I have. So I can do four panels like this. So this is pretty simple stuff. Let's say that's my top panel, put in a little gutter right there, and gutter on the side. So long skinny panels are something that you can do. So add another one in like that, add another one in like that. All pretty much the same size, but I'm going to make the bottom one a little bit bigger. So we can do four panels like that. And maybe I'm using four panels like this. Uh, a scene I would do in something like this is, okay, I want my focus of the scene and what I want my, um, what my audience to see and see as important is gonna happen in this. Um, bigger panels can also denote that more time is happening in between the panels. So maybe you're showing someone running through these top panels right here and then someone resting for a period of time. Maybe it's daylight at this point here, but by the time we get to the bottom panel, this bigger weightier panel, that's telling us this is our current time now. This is where we're focused. It's the biggest panel. Um, maybe it's nighttime now. So let's say a character running through these top panels and then has completely stopped that motion in this panel right here. And that's interesting because then you say, well, what's going to happen next? We've seen time change in between these. You know, the smaller panels are showing quickly over time, going through different time period. And then you get to a bigger panel at the bottom and then you have your characters breathe and focus. So it's it's a break to look and see what's happening. Um, you know, another way you can structure your panels as well. Um, let's do, still doing four panels. One right here. One right here. You can do three panels if you want to. What's kind of interesting within um, this as well is we're still going to do four panels, but I'm going to have it be down here. So again, when we're reading comic books, this is going to be our first panel, second panel, third and fourth. And in Western comic reading, you know, we, we understand that as we go across, we go down to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. So keep some of these in mind when you're thinking of how you want to structure your comics and, and the weight of the story you want to tell. For panels like this, um, I can tell this is my first panel right here. That's pretty simple. This is my second. But when you have a situation like this, so I created a panel within a panel, um, you might say, well, I'm not really sure which one comes first. Does the big one come first or the little one? Depending on where you position that third or that fourth panel within your scene, uh, a bottom right corner like this one right here is really going to tell me that this is the last action that happened. You know, it's at the bottom of the page. So when your eye reads, it goes like this, down and over like that. That's a really nice composition right there because when we do compositions, we kind of are looking for a Z shape of where our eyes want to go. So I'm going to use a... Until I was an art major, I have so many pens and pencils everywhere. I'm going to use a bright uh, colored pencil for this so you guys can kind of see. So again, eyeline for something like this is going to go back and forth. Eyeline is something you want to consider when you make comics. And then it ends here. So I have my little line there to show me that's where I start. That's where I end right there. So for something like this, my eyeline again, you can see those zigzag patterns. So I'm looking across the page going back and forth. We start here. Go here, go through here, and then out at the end of the page there. So you want to take 
your audience through the entire page when you're making a comic book. And this is something you can just do in your downtime. I like to kind of sketch those pages out, sketch out ideas, thumbnails, things like that. So when you're out camping, maybe you're in your tent at night with a little light by you, you know, use the experiences from the day that you've had to come up with some ideas for your comics. So think about interactions you've had during that day, um, how it can play out differently with your characters, you know, how situations um, and how you reacted to something, um, how that can change how you act in your comics and how you want your characters to act. So life is the greatest teacher. So always pay attention to those things when you're when you're a creative. Um, another thing you can do, so instead of that four panel structure we've been doing, we're still gonna do four panels within. Um, and hopefully you guys understand this. I'm not gonna draw too much stuff out just because we don't have too much time and drawing under pressure is really scary. So, <laughs> um, but I still wanna show you one of the techniques that artists will use. So we're gonna do in this main section, let's say you have your main drawing of a person right here. And we're just going to do a quick sketch like that. Hips, arms, down to legs. So let's say you have your main person right here. Quick, again, super quick sketch. Um, that entire page is a panel. So your whole page can be a panel. So again, we have page, gutters, panels as structures for our comic book pages. A page can be a panel. Um, you can also still have panels within this page. So we can still have our first panel right here. You know, maybe a little character right there. We go into this main page here. Maybe they're saying hello, just quick like that. Walking. And then maybe we have you know, maybe they're saying hi to someone. So this is the back of a person's head as they're walking. And then maybe we have another panel down here to kind of end. And you can keep structure within. So your main page, we kind of saw that in our Robin comic, but your main page can have a picture in the background with panels within it. And it's still gonna kind of take you there. So we're looking at that composition again. Here's your starting point right here. We see that panel, it tells us it's a panel, so we look there right away, and we go over like this. The character in the middle's body is going to bring us down the page because we have another point of tension right over here with this person from behind. And then I notice at the end, there's a panel right there, and that's where my eye line stops. So thinking about composition in that way when we're creating comic books. So, you know, panel placement is really important, um, you know taking a traditional panel design, that three panel design, this is actually a really common panel design as well, and then subverting it. So uh, subverting the expectations of what that panel can look like and having that small piece right there. Um, having your page act as a panel. So you might think, well, there's only two panels on this page. This is technically three. So there's three right there. That's kind of creating that scene for you. Um, and then the final one, what you can do too is, you know, it doesn't have to be squares. So let's say, I've seen some really cool uh, techniques before that are, you know, maybe we have our panels like that, that then cross divide within there. So there's my gutter right there and there's my outer panels right here. So you have a small character action here, maybe someone's handing someone something. So hand just like that, a little thumb right there. They're handing them an important object. Uh, that's kind of hard to see, but, and then maybe a hand receiving it there. So it's, it's almost an action that's happening at the same time. And it's showing like a really quick change in between the two. So there's the hand depositing it into another person's hand like that. Kind of hard to tell, really sketchy, but you kind of understand what I mean. So really small sub panels within those panels. So dividing it even further, changing some of those perceptions. Um, we'll use this last page to show some other unique panel designs. So something like a, let's say here's your page like this, another really cool one I've seen, and having a circular panel in the center. And then maybe you have your circular, circular panel in the center, that's a really important thing that's happening or is central to what you wanna say on your comic book page. And then we do some unique, maybe almost like a sunburst pattern coming out of this, you know what I mean? Like. So we can see how other characters are reacting to a central situation. 
you know, kind of draw something around like that, and even subdiverting those further, and we can start seeing, you know, that covers more of the page. We're seeing small triangles within there. You can do different triangle shapes, you know. So the cool thing about comics is, while we've talked about comics are really structured, um, you know, specifically superhero comics have a, um, a very distinct way that they look. Uh, there's so much you can do to change and subvert that. And one of my favorite movies that I actually recommend, I still think it's on Netflix. It, it might not be on Netflix anymore, but one of my favorite comic book movies that perfectly marries, and I want you guys to watch it as homework because it's one of my favorites, but also because I think it's a great example. Um, but it marries animated 3D animation with panels. So the cool thing about this movie is they actually will have panels within the movie itself. There's actually two I'm going to recommend for that. So I want you guys to do some homework and sketch some of the panels that you see or sketch some of the things that make you think of that sequential art, which is what we call comics, which just means pictures um, in order. So sequential art. Uh, so the first film I want you guys to watch as homework is, I think it's still on Netflix. Uh, this is a movie called Into the Spider-Verse. Um, it's technically based on a, uh, a comic book series, but it's totally different than the comic book series. Um, I actually prefer the movie to the comic book. Uh, the comic, or the movie is about um, an alternate universe Spider-Man. His name is Miles Morales. Uh, in comics, he was originally part of the Ultimates universe. Um, I was actually very into comics when Miles first became a character, which was really cool. Um, but one of the things I want you guys to do is watch this movie because there are so many cool um, ways that they evoke the imagery of comic books. So. It Page even says a web of visual delights, and this is always so hard to hold up books. There we go. Yay! Okay, so right there, you'll actually see in the movie, sometimes the um, the movie will break out into panels. So look at how that movie breaks out certain scenes into panels. Why might they break out certain scenes into panels? There's a really good scene after Miles first gets his powers where he hears people talking around him. And we see Miles walking forward as a central character, and then all around him are these panel breakouts in this scene as he's walking forward of people talking about him of him of him thinking people are talking about him and being super self-conscious and he can hear people now even better than before and he doesn't understand what's happening um, so it really builds that feeling of anxiety um, and they do it by cluttering that that scene and there's a lot of sound and a lot of sound effects you'll see uh, onomatopoeia sound effects which means um, it's the sound effect of a noise, so clang. Uh, in Japanese, the sound of a heartbeat is doki doki, so you'll see the characters for doki doki uh, next to someone if they're scared or something like that. Um, and show like those really graphic comic book styles to, to kind of bring it all together. Um, so definitely check out uh, that movie. It's very, very good. Other movies that uh, have a similar feeling to it, there's um, a movie called Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, um, or Scott Pilgrim it's Scott Pilgrim. I can't think of the name of the movie, but it's Scott Pilgrim. Um, it's a really interesting movie, too, that was based on an American indie comic that uses really similar um, thematic language. So they use the thematic language of comic books. So those bright colors, those sound effects, things like that. So if you guys can, um, here's a good example, too. When they storyboarded, they thought, you know, it's like a storyboard, but in some ways, storyboards are a comic book layout. They teach you how to make these things. So there's him getting his powers for the first time, showing that. How do you show a scene like that? It's not as engaging as a comic book. Um, so it works better for storyboarding what's going to happen in a scene to have that many small panels like that. Um, but you can also storyboard your comics beforehand. So what actions do you want to take place? Mess around with them uh, and really get out there and experiment with it. So um, I hope you guys had fun and learned a couple of things about comics and comic structure. Um, you know, in my comic kit, what I like to have when I make comics or, or draw, things like that, um, I like to have a couple of different things. So if you want to get started on something like this, what you really need to make a comic is paper. I absolutely recommend a ruler, um, unless you're going to get really experimental. But again, like we talked about, you should learn the basics before just jumping headfirst into things. Um, so get a ruler as well. Um, pencil, ruler, paper, pen. That's all you need to make a comic book. Um, and even then, if you're just doing sketches, you know, you can probably forego the ruler, but there's, it's so simple to do. Um, I like to have pens of varying uh, thickness. So having like a 0.5 pen, um, 
the there's a couple of different places like art shops that will sell even I have right here this is a um, 0.25 pen so it is a very it is a very fine point so you can really get a lot of detail in that um, but you know even if you just have a pen like this and have one line thickness that's okay um, you you don't need a lot to make comic books so um, I hope you guys are having a good summer I hope you guys are getting outside and I can't wait to see the comics that you make so I hope you guys have a good one bye guys